Okay, welcome everyone uh, joining us from home. Tonight, uh, this is a work session of the Pocosin City Council for Monday, October 28th. And uh, two items on the agenda, the first being a discussion of the existing uh, weapons ordinance for the city of Pocosin and see if there's any desire to make any changes to that. And then the second uh, item is an up update on economic development. So, Randy? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As council members will recall, the past several months, and actually a portion of the last year, we have been going through, you've been going through, and looking at our gun-related ordinances to make sure that we were updated with recent changes in state law and do something which was uh, even more so, which was to streamline our ordinance such that in cases where we were simply conforming to the state law, that we streamlined the language so that it was clear and it would evolve with future changes in the state code so we wouldn't find ourselves perpetually in a position of having to catch up with recent changes. There were four elements, and Mr. Moore is gonna walk us through them in a minute, where we had some choice uh, most of the uh, gun-related ordinances were following the state uh, code to the letter. But in, in certain instances, they give us local choice to do um, additional things or to handle them in a, in a manner that's not prescribed uh, uniformly throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, those items, uh, we'll, Wayne will walk us through. Um, they, I would note to the people that are listening at home and, and remind you that these sections that we're going to go over today are in your current ordinance and have been in for some time. So these are not proposed changes. These are simply the four discretionary items that we have within our ordinance. And there was a discussion last time that we um, worked on this together. Uh, the thought that prior to second reading, we would have one more discussion and focus on these items. And if I could, before I yield the floor to, um, to Ms. Moore, um, I would note to you that uh, Mrs. Crawford is at home recovering from an injury and unable to uh, join us this evening, but she specifically asked as part of the conversation that I share with you um, a section which we've talked about before, but to keep it fresh in your mind, um, specifically, if you wouldn't mind passing that down, this is, uh, Virginia Code section 15.2-915.4, um, the specific section that she wanted to bring to your attention is highlighted. It is um, lettered section B. And since it's short and the people at home may not have a copy of the section, uh, if without objection, I'll just read it so that the people uh, at home can, can know what we're looking at. The section reads as follows. It's only four lines. No such ordinance authorized by subsection A, that is the ordinance that allows governing bodies to make um, local law uh, pertaining to pneumatic guns, shall prohibit the use of pneumatic guns in facilities approved for, sh for shooting ranges on other property where firearms may be discharged or on or within private property with the permission of the owner or legal possessor thereof when conducted with reasonable care to prevent a projectile from crossing the bounds of the property. That concludes my remarks, and I think Wayne's gonna walk us through our four sections. Well, the, with, what we're dealing with is section 54-202, <coughs> and when we first considered this, there were two options. One of them was to leave in the general language that we had with these four specific items or simply refer to the code section which dealt with willful discharge of firearms in a public place. Um, we voted and included these four items uh, within our particular ordinance. The section that the manager just referred to you is, uh, it does say that the city has a right to uh, prevent the discharge. Uh, it also says within that same section that the, that the ordinance cannot prevent somebody from discharging a, a pneumatic gun on private property with consent. 
In other words, if you own property, it says uh, discharge or with, within private property with permission of the owner or legal possessor thereof when conducted with reasonable care to prevent a projectile from crossing the bounds of the property. In other words, the state law says that we cannot make it unlawful in every incidence to discharge. That, that's an exception. If you want this clarified and say accept as, then we can certainly do that. Uh, I mean, I would say to you, I don't think we have any intention of charging anybody with a discharge on their private property with consent, but uh, Tracy was worried about her kids in the backyard kind of thing. Well, not that would create a problem. But it's, it's clear what the state law authorizes to do. Uh, we do have a right. It says if, you know, if in, in the, uh, the city governing body considered to be a heavily populated area and that it to be dangerous to inhabitants, then you have a right to pass what we pass right here. Well, so my advice is if you're concerned about it, it's, it's fairly easy to add the exception that's set out in the, in, in the code. Okay. I, I, I would like to see the exception put in because the, a, a, as it's currently written, okay, it's illegal for us to do that, okay? And, and the state law says that we're not supposed to do that, uh, and, and it makes common sense to do that. I mean, to, to tell someone on their private property that they can't shoot a BB gun when reasonable care is exercised, but it's okay to shoot a 22 caliber rifle, that's ridiculous. Okay. And so uh, those two things are very contrary, or contradictory, in, in my opinion. I, I would like to see that exception there for uh, guns like BB guns and airsoft, where, where it's reasonable and they execute, exercise reasonable care. Uh, to make certain that they don't cross the bounds of the property, but they're able to do something that's reasonable. Then, then all we have to do is add, except as provided in section 15.2-915.4B of the Code of Virginia. That would suit me fine. Fine with me? It doesn't sound like it makes any difference, would it? But we're going to change the the wording of the, which is which is fine. I mean, we should write our our codes and our ordinances in a way that that allows people to understand them. So it it really makes no legal difference from what I'm understanding if we put this in or out. It basically is already, and all we'll have to do is put a watch clause on that if state law changes for some other. Well, that's why I refer to the state law because if they change the exception clause, then we automatically get the exception in it. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Right okay. now, Sorry. it's illegal for anybody to fire a BB a pellet gun in the city. And so this would make it legal under certain conditions. Yes. Which is probably a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does that uh, majority council feel like that's uh, good for them? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Easy enough. Okay. All right. So, uh, second reading, we'll just need to add that. Uh, <laughs> second reading, we need to put that that exception into the uh, language when we vote on the second reading. Okay. If somebody this needs is, to be prepared to make is, a motion. This is the second reading. Okay. Tonight. Well, right. All right. But we need to put it, but it needs to be included yeah. in the second reading by an amendment by the right. to amend. So we'll we'll bring it at your next meeting or as soon as we can get it done. So you can it's not in the agenda it. this evening, right? It is not. Okay. All right, so bring it prepared with that language, and uh, we'll move that forward. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Um, the other item that we scheduled for, <coughs> excuse me, for work session discussion this evening um, is a follow-on. As you know, the, the city has been engaged for some time in relooking at its land use ordinances. Uh, we've made changes in the past. A couple of years as it pertains to minimum lot size and R&D. We made changes as it relates to village commercial. Uh, we made changes as it relates to certain commercial uses such as um, drive-throughs and setbacks for existing uh, buildings. And that process continued uh, in, over the last year. As you, as you know, uh, we looked at uh, as part of a, a process which began with the EDA and the landowners in the big woods and in the city and 
Planning Commission, we looked at the, the big woods. And on your agenda for this evening is a second reading of um, the overlay district for the big woods. Uh, one of the things that, that we intended as staff to do is sort of always roll forward with the rest lessons that you've learned. And one of the things that we learned and, and you incorporated on first reading was changes to the way that open space, or excuse me, that, um, that wetlands were dealt with as part of a development process. And recently, our planning director, Debbie Best, who is here, had an occasion to speak with the Planning Commission about sort of carrying on the lessons learned and perhaps other things pertaining to the open space ordinance as a sort of a continuing the discussion of sort of updating and modifying our ordinances. And so with the Planning Commission's consent, they're gonna begin that work in the coming weeks. And what we would like to do this evening is just generally provide a summary of the kinds of things that are being thought about um, way before the process concludes itself at the Planning Commission so that you'll know uh, what's being talked about and if you all have any input that you'd like to make at this point, individually or as a group, it'd be a nice time to receive that. Debbie, would you come forward, please? Excellent job. Thank you for the introduction and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for giving us the opportunity to at least bring you up to speed as to where, what the Planning Commission is going to be looking at. As um, the city manager indicated, we are looking at making some changes to the open space ordinance. There's basically four areas that we're focusing on. Um, one being the density yield that's allowed. Uh, currently, our ordinance allows two units, two residential units per acre. There is a possibility that the Planning Commission may look at increasing that yield, but only slightly. Keep in mind that the open space ordinance is an overlay district that applies to the single family areas of the city. So the last thing that we want to do is to upset the apple cart for our existing traditional neighborhoods. However, we do want to offer an opportunity for the larger or the, the smaller, more sensitive lands that are remaining to be developed and have a lot of challenges for development. It gives them an opportunity <coughs> to actually make it more attractive to the developer. Um, the second thing that we're looking at is possibly increasing the amount of wetland credits that we presently give for the open space development. This ordinance has been on the books since uh, the early 2000s, and at that time, it was a very conservative number for the use of wetlands in calculating density yield. At that time, we decided that a 20% was a much more conservative number. However, given that wetlands have um, actually migrated more into the area and we have more to deal with, and it's taken up a lot of the upland areas, it may be a good opportunity for us to take a look at possibly increasing that from 20% to a more compatible number with the, uh, the new PUD ordinance for the big woods, which could allow up to a 50 to 100% credit. I don't think 100% is the right number for our residential areas, but maybe a 50% credit would be much more um, compatible to the surrounding area. Um, keep in mind that if you use a wetlands credit, then that area must remain in a conservation easement and cannot be disturbed in the future. One of the other areas that we're looking at is possibly reducing the current buffering that's um, required, the perimeter buffer around an open space development. Currently, we require a 40-foot depth. We may want to take a look at reducing that, if at all, if that makes sense for the areas that we have left to for the areas remaining to be developed. And then the fourth thing is uh, eliminating the minimum lot size. Currently, we require a quarter acre lot size. It may be more compatible if we just eliminate a lot size requirement 
and allow some flexibility in the lot size to allow more of the clustering effect. But there would be a lot size, but we're just not sure what that particular number would be. And I don't know that we really want to set that number for the developer itself. We are hoping that you know these are ideas that are you know, give incentives to creating some quality development for us. And like I said, it may help some of the um, areas that are experiencing a lot of challenges. It may give them an opportunity to open up for, for a development opportunity. So that basically summarizes it at this point. We do hope to have a draft ordinance to the Planning Commission at their meeting on December the 2nd. They combine their November and December meetings during the holiday season each year by their bylaws. So we hope to at least have some draft language for them to discuss at their December 2nd meeting. And if they are in favor of it and if, it's, if, if there is not a lot of discussion um, or, if they, or if they're ready to move forward, we could actually have something to the City Council for consideration at your January meeting. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions you, or do comments? Do you have a ballpark number as far as the density that you're thinking about? Three to four units. Four. I would be hesitant to go above four because above four you're looking at a more moderate density. And of course, with our conservative nature, we have a tendency to have a low density in our residential areas. But I think a three or four unit yield would work would blend very well with our existing neighborhoods. David, a, a question. The, the elimination of lot size, is it just in that overlay use area or is it citywide? No, sir. It would only be in the overlay district. Okay. Okay, so basically, see if I can summarize this up and make sure I understand it. What we've learned in the Big Woods uh, PUD ordinances, where you're trying to take into our overlay districts uh, some credit for wetlands, if not total credit for wetlands, controlling density by the number of units per acre yield for the entire thing. Uh, you know, like say it's a five acre track, two and a half acres are encumbered by wetlands, you know, you're going to end up with some type of density yield. Um, based on the five acres or 50% of that two and a half. Right. Depending on what Planning Commission studies brings forward and what council ultimately approves. So that allows you to take full advantage the, of the provisions of the Chesapeake Bay Ordinance, which basically promote clustering of homes in protection of wetlands. And all of that would be open space, the wetlands would be open space enjoyed by the neighborhood. Right? right? Sounds like win-win. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Anything else, Randy? Or wait till 7? It's uh, 20 after. When are we able to go to closed session now, or do we need to wait until after the advertised start time of meeting? I think it's part of your regular 7 o'clock agenda. I don't think you can do it. Okay. In advance. I don't see charity, so I guess we'll uh, suggest we uh, well, adjourn you, the reconvene at 7. You want to put her in the uh, in the 7 o'clock discussion? She's at, the, she's at the end of the agenda. The 2013 is, is charity. Oh, okay. At the end of new business. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Close this work session.